for me, I do place a lot more value and importance on following or knowing how to incorporate a more YSL aesthetic into my life. And I would rather pay to have the brand name of YSL because hey there, my handsome and pretty little Cobras and welcome back to the Cobras Nest. For those of you who are new, my name is Minion Cobra and I make minimalism videos. Today's minimalism video is going to be expensive, high level energy. Why I still enjoy luxury as a minimalist. So without further ado, let's just get into the video. Let's get it, let's go. Woo. So I have had subscribers tell me that like, they're really happy that I do embrace luxury as a minimalist because maybe not everybody does. And I do think that luxury, because it's something that's a surplus outside of your basic needs, should be treated responsibly and you really shouldn't be jeopardizing your financial health for things that are a luxury, a surplus. But yeah, let's get talking into the list. Okay, so number one, make sure you are financially stable first. There's a reason this is called a luxury. It's a luxury. It's not a necessity. And that's something that really needs to be stated. You can enjoy high expensive energy, but you need to do it in a responsible way because you're handling something that's quite heavy, something that's quite expensive. If you are not careful with it, the cost is at your own expense. The burden is upon you. And I don't want that for my subscribers. And that's something that I, I really want to drive home is that if you're going to enjoy luxuries, and the reason that I'm able to enjoy luxuries is because I'm financially stable. Like I, at some point I quit the rat race of like mindless consumption and I decided to work on my financial health and I'm in a much better place financially so that if I want to buy something I am in a place where I can but I had to make that decision first that I couldn't really just keep messing up my money for maintaining errors Ugh, look at me on social media with like this bag and, and this purse like it's just I just didn't want to keep living like that so please be careful and have your financial state of affairs in order first okay number two understanding that it's not me it's not part of my identity so I think that you can still love luxury items. I don't think there's any reason why you can't be a minimalist and like luxury items. A good example of that is Colorful Noir. She is a luxury minimalist. For myself, I just kind of had to realize that you can enjoy them without it being part of your identity. Luxury is not a personality. I know that that might be a hard pill to swallow for some people, especially if your Instagram feed is just pretty much just luxury bags. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love me a luxury bag, but it's just, it's not part of my identity anymore. There's more to me than a material possession okay number three we still do live in a material world so moderation is key the middle road so in one of the final stages of my minimalism I really went deep into Zen and spirituality and trying to escape this material world but actually you become a stone Buddha and this is actually a Zen principle somebody who's too deep in their own spirituality has completely lost the purpose of spirituality it's to live your material life well it isn't to become a stone Buddha if you just sit there and meditate the whole day you're no better than a a rock. You're not a rock. You're a person. You're a living, breathing individual. So we will continue to live in this material world for the rest of our lives. So you should be able to enjoy, just like you can enjoy the, the sound of rain and the taste of delicious food. It's all made of atoms and molecules. So is the purse. The purse is made of cowhide and metal, which is also atoms. It's all just material things in the material world. So until the day that you die, you have every right to enjoy these luxury and material and worldly possessions. Again, moderation is key. You don't have to go ham and everything in excess is never good, but you can in moderation. Okay, number four, watch the movie The Monk Came Down From The Mountain. So there's this movie, it's a Chinese movie, it's called, I'm not sure what the Chinese name is, but the English name is The Monk Comes Down From The Mountain. So essentially this is the life of a monk who was a young monk and he came down the mountain and he saw a beautiful girl and he quit being a monk. He, he came to a crossroad. He's like, I can keep being a monk or I can marry this beautiful girl and leave the monastic life behind. And so he did. The movie has a lot of like undertones and there's a lot of things and can be interpreted in different ways this monk unfortunately his brother isn't a monk his wife cheats on him with his with his brother and she leaves him and then his disciple kills them it's a very messy story and I'm not sure what messages could be taken from this maybe the message is like lust and all of that is equal to suffering but the point that I'm trying to say is the monk himself though he was very happy and confident with the decision that he made. It didn't bother him that he left behind the monastic life and he described it in a good way. He's like, we only have so many years in our life between the sick days and the bad days in our like 10 good years of good days in our life. So why not just enjoy them? And that really spoke to me because if you guys have been following me for a period of time, you guys know that I'm, and I really do appreciate my Zen practice and trying to be as spiritual as I can. So how does one have this dichotomy of having spirituality and luxury items together? Well, hearing what monks who've quit the monastic life have to say, like people who've gone really deep and lived that life and what they have to say about it. And they're like, honestly, at the end of the day, why don't we just enjoy our lives? And it's, you're free to live however you want. It's a good movie. And I think it might illustrate that point. And if you have seen it, comment down below if you've seen this movie. And if you haven't, it's, it's a great film. Really, really fantastic film. I definitely recommend it. Okay, number five, 
luxuries are expensive, so it gave me something to strive for. So in some of the stages of my minimalism where I started to kind of become a stone Buddha and I had no drive in life because I couldn't own anything and I couldn't eat anything and I couldn't do anything, I just kind of sat there and meditated the whole day, I got really depressed and I felt like I kind of wanted to kill myself. <laughs> I'm not making light of depression. Please seek a professional. I'm being honest and vulnerable and I laugh a little because I'm in a much better place now that I look back and I'm like, those were some dark times and I don't wish that upon anybody. But what I'm trying to say is, and this is actually a concept from Rich Dad Poor Dad, is a little greed is healthy. A little greed, not a lot of greed, not a lot of excess. A little greed is healthy. And that really spoke to me because not letting yourself do anything, there's really no reason to strive. Like if. If you're playing a game and you're told you can't play the game and you can't win any of the prizes, do you really want to play the game? There's really no point in playing the game. Life is the same thing. If you have things that you want and you want to strive for them, I think we should have the freedom to strive for them. We shouldn't let labels like minimalism, extreme minimalism, anti-consumption, hyper-consumption, these things stop us from want wanting or having the things that we want. If it's another thing entirely, if you've made that intentional decision that you don't want to partake in that, I totally respect that. I'm not here advocating that if you're a minimalist, you should still like luxury things. That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm just saying that if you want to have luxury items and you're a minimalist, that's fine. You, you can definitely do it. You can have things to strive for, whether it be luxury or travel or whatever. Minimalism is different for everybody. Figure out what makes you feel awesome. It doesn't matter if it's expensive. I remember one person was like, I can't have a BMW because I'm trying to be a minimalist. No, you can have a BMW and be a minimalist. I don't see why not. Number six, I studied fashion in school. So I enjoy it as an art form as a creator. So maybe people might not know this about me, but I studied fashion in high school. I love fashion. I love to know what is the life of the person. So I'll give you kind of an example. So we studied some of the major fashion houses in school, like Coco Chanel and Yves Saint Laurent. A lot of them are French, right? This is a probably unpopular opinion. I'm not too crazy about Coco Chanel the individual, so in turn, I'm not too crazy about her brand. I know it's like, oh my god, how can you say that? Like most people who like luxury products like Coco Chanel and like like Chanel and, and that, but I don't. I don't really care for her lifestyle and I don't really care for her opinion. I studied it and I created my own opinion about it. Now take Yves Saint Laurent, for example. He's He was very minimalistic in, in his art form. He was very um, against, I guess very black sheep, against the current times, very like effortless, chic, rock kind of style, which really spoke to me a lot and I really do like his design. So for me, I do place a lot more value and importance on following or knowing how to incorporate a more YSL aesthetic into my life and I would rather pay to have the brand name of YSL because I like the ideology and the vision behind that fashion house and maybe Coco Chanel. Like, I think Coco Chanel is a bit too high maintenance and a little too hoity-toity for my liking as a minimalist. I prefer a much more like black sheep type of vibe so I will put my money towards something that speaks more to me and that. So what I'm trying to say is I don't follow the general idea of like looking at the current product of a house. I like to support the house based on the ideology and the vision behind it. Another um, artist that I like is Kanye West. I know that that's a, like a, a big, like there's two camps about it. You either really like him or you really dislike him. I don't, I'm not crazy about his music, but I definitely love his like minimalism clothing style. Like, oh my gosh. I love the Yeezys, like I have Yeezys, I, I love the like baggy oversized clothes with like the tan color, the creams, all that. Oh my gosh, a minimalist dream. And I heard he's a minimalist himself too, or at least has certain elements of that. So I like seeing what individuals create based on their own lives and opinions and, and like the values that they have. So yeah, I enjoy fashion as an art, as a fellow creator myself, as I create minimalism content myself, I like to see what others do too. Okay, number seven. I like that someone's dream lives on in their art and that I like to feel like I'm a part of that and I like to feel connected to that. So as I mentioned with like, I like art based on like the creator's like life and their philosophy. I feel the same way with like luxury items. I kind of like to know the history and, and I have heard a lot of people say that they enjoy buying luxury products because they're buying a little bit of history. And I definitely agree with that. I think that we, we are all connected. That's a Zen principle. We are all connected. Everything in life is connected. So when you partake in, in, in luxury, luxury products, you take it and you make it your own. Like I've seen people incorporate high fashion with luxury, which used to be two separate worlds, like street fashion and, and, and luxury were two different things. But now like the off-white brand, Virgil Abloh, he's kind of fused them together and we're always remaking and telling 
a re-storytelling of things in life and that expensive high energy i like being part of it you know another minimalist who's liked luxury things was kelly stamps although recently she said she's not too into it anymore she sees it as like marketing and branding and i also agree with that there's always that dichotomy right but just feeling like i'm allowed to partake in it i don't like to be restrictive in in, in things i don't like to say like i can't be part of it i try to play too much place too much value on it if i don't think it's that important anymore but i no longer feel like i can't be part of it I think we can all enjoy life in moderation and be part of things because honestly at the end of the day we're all connected so why not okay thank you for having taken the time to watch this video and i will see you guys in the next one thanks for watching bye